Hello, um, if you're listening to this, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about a book called, um, not Twilight. It's called Life and Death. And for some reason, they have, uh, when you hold it upside down, that's the way the spine says is the other way. So, anyway, knowing her, Stephanie Myers, the first chapter is probably out online. Uh, which is a bad idea because this is so boring and I don't know if it's because I'm too old for it or if it's because I read the original 10 years ago but anyway we're skipping the first chapter uh, I lost steam around the time uh, they came out and told me that my car is ready to pick up so here we are chapter 2 open book the story thus far the main character's name is Bo. He's tall. Um, he's got more of a vibe of emotionally traumatized and doesn't know it. Whereas Bella knew and, like, resented having been emotionally neglected as a child and forced to do pay the bills. Ugh, I don't know if it's realistic. I didn't live that lifestyle. Anyway, like, how did she know how to do dishes? Anyway... Open book, chapter two. He's already met uh, Edward, who is a girl in this book, but I'm pretending for my own purposes that um, the only gender swap character in the book is Bo. Everyone else is still what they were. So uh, Team Jacob all the way. If Jacob's a girl in this book, I'm just going to ignore that and continue onward and upwards. Here we go, chapter two, open book. The next day was better, and worse. It was better because it wasn't raining yet, though the clouds were dense and black. It was easier because I knew better what to expect of the day. Michaela came to sit by me in English and walked with me to my next class, with chess club Erica glaring at her all the way there. That was kind of flattering. People didn't stare at me quite as much as they had yesterday. I sat with a big group at lunch that included Michaela, Erica, Jeremy, Alan, and several other people whose names and faces I now remembered. Good for you, kid, because I don't remember any of that. I began to feel like I might be treading water instead of drowning in it. It was worse because I was tired. I still couldn't sleep with the rain beating on the house. It was worse because Mr. Van Miss Varner called on me in trig when my hand wasn't raised and I had the wrong answer. It was miserable because I had to play volleyball, and the one time I didn't dodge out of the way of the ball, I hit two of my teammates in the head with one bad volley. It was worse because Edith Cullen wasn't in school at all. All morning, I was trying not to think about lunch, not wanting to remember those hate-filled stares. Part of me wanted to confront her and demand to know what her problem was. While I was laying awake in bed, I even imagined out what I would say. But I knew myself too well to think I would really have the guts to do it. Maybe if she hadn't been so abnormally beautiful. But when I walked into the cafeteria with Jeremy, trying to keep my eyes from sweeping the place for her and totally failing, I saw that her four adoptive siblings were sitting together at the same table as before, and she was not with them. Michaela intercepted us and steered us to her table. Jeremy seemed thrilled by the attention and his friends quickly joined us. I tried to tune into the conversations around me, but I was still uncomfortable, waiting for Edith's arrival. I hoped she would simply ignore me when she came and prove that I was making a big deal of nothing. She didn't come, and I got more and more tense. I walked to biology with more confidence when, by the end of lunch, she still hadn't showed. Michaela, who was sitting, starting to seem weirdly, I don't know, territorial about me, walked by my side to class. I hesitated for a long second at the door, but Edith Collin wasn't here either. I excelled and went to my seat. Michaela followed, talking about an upcoming trip to the beach. She lingered by my desk till the bell rang. Then she smiled at me wistfully and went to sit by a boy with braces and something close to a bowl cut. I didn't want to be arrogant, but I was pretty sure she was into me. <laughs> Which was a strange feeling. <laughs> what could be a second? <laughs> I don't know if I identify with this or if I'm laughing at him. <laughs> oh 
am I laughing at? Girls hadn't noticed me much at home. I wondered if I wanted her to like me. She was sort of pretty and everything, but her attention made me feel a little uncomfortable. Why was that? Because she'd pick me instead of the other way around? That was a stupid reason. Ego running wild. I like I, like it had to be my decision first. Still, it was not as stupid as the other possibility I thought of. I really hoped it wasn't because the time I'd spent staring at Edith Cullen yesterday. But I was kind of afraid that it was. Which was about the stupidest thing possible, really. If I had based my reaction to a girl's looks off a face like Edith's, I was doomed. That was fantasy, not reality. <laughs> I was glad that I had the desk to myself, that Edith wasn't here. I told myself that again and again. Still, I couldn't get rid of this annoying feeling that I was the reason she was gone. It was ridiculous and egotistical, again, to think that I could affect anyone that much. It was impossible, but I couldn't stop worrying about it. <laughs> when the school day was finally done and the patches of red were fading out of my face from the latest volleyball incident, I changed quickly back into my jeans and heavy sweater. I rushed from the locker room, glad to find that I had successfully evaded Michaela for the moment. I hurried out to the parking lot. It was crowded now with fleeting students. I got in my truck and, d and cl dug through my backpack to make sure I still had what I needed. It was no secret that Charlie couldn't cook much besides fried eggs and bacon. Last night I requested that he be assigned I be assigned kitchen detail for the duration of my stay. He was willing enough to let me take over. A quick search revealed that he had no food in the house. So I had my grocery list and the cash from the jar in the cupboard labeled food money. And I was <laughs> headed to the thrift way. I gunned a thunderous engine to life. Also, his dad bought him a truck. It's, um, 70 years old. It's the exact same truck Bella had. I don't know why the truck isn't gender swapped. Like, shouldn't it have been a 99 Honda? I don't know. Continue. I gunned the thunderous engine to life, ignoring the heads that turned in my direction, and back into a place in line of cars that were waiting to exit the parking lot. As I waited, trying to pretend that the ear-splitting rumble was coming from someone else's car, I saw the two Collins and the Hale twins walking up to their car. It was the shiny new Volvo, the only shiny car. Of course, I hadn't noticed their clothes before. I'd been too mesmerized by their faces. Now that I looked, it was obvious that they were all wearing stuff that probably cost more than my entire wardrobe. Attractive as they all were, they could have worn garbage sacks and started in a trend. Note to self, the garbage sack vampire who lives in LA and they're gender neutral and they start trends like that all the time and they're an artist and they drink turpentine like it's nothing because they're immortal and that's a book I would read. Anyway. It seemed like too much for them to have both looks and money. Though, as far as I could tell, life worked that way for most of the time. It didn't look like it bought them any popularity here. But I couldn't really believe that. That isolation had to be something they chose. I couldn't imagine any door their beauty wouldn't open for them, like prostitution or modeling. <laughs> They looked at my noisy truck as I passed them, just like everyone else, except they weren't anything like anything else, anyone else. I saw that the big blonde guy, Royal it must be, figured, anyway, Royal had this hand, had his hand casually on the hip of the really tall girl with the dark curly hair, who looked like she was just as familiar with the weight room as he was. He was to be a good two inches taller than even I was. But he had on only half an inch on her. Though he was obviously pretty sure of himself. I was still kind of surprised he felt comfortable doing that. Not that she wasn't hot. She was super mega hot. But not approachable. Like even the rock would dare to whistle at her. No. It, if you know what I mean. The blonde girl caught me looking. 
and the way her eyes narrowed made me turn straight ahead and punch the gas. But the truck didn't go any faster. The engine just grumbled even louder. The first way was not far from the school. I, you know, I think I've been reading this wrong. I think he is supposed to be goofy. It's supposed to sound like how I'm reading it. I've, I've been approaching this incorrectly for ten years. The first way was not far from the school, a few streets south off the highway. It was nice to be inside the supermarket. It felt normal. I did most of the shopping at home and it felt easily into the pattern of the, the familiar job. The store was big enough inside that I couldn't hear the tapping of the rain on the roof to remind me where I was. Also, if you haven't read Twilight, he came from the desert where it never rains. So he hates rain. Um, that's his personality. When I got home, I unloaded all the groceries, reorganized the cupboards till everything was in place that made sense. Charlie's system was kind of haphazard. I hoped Charlie wouldn't mind that he was an OCD about his kitchen the way I was. Once I was satisfied with the organization, I worked on the prep for dinner. Uh, I kind of have a sixth sense about my mom. I realized as I was sticking the marinade covered steak into the fridge that I hadn't let her know I made it yesterday. She was probably freaking out. I went up to the stairs, two at a time, and fired up the old computer in my room. This is 2008, so when he says old, he means old now. It took a minute to wheeze to life, and then I had to wait for a connection. Once I was online, three messages showed up in my inbox. The first was from yesterday, while I was still in rote. Bo, my mom wrote. Write me as soon as you get in. Tell me how your flight was. Is it raining? I miss you already. I'm almost finished packing for Florida, but I can't find my pink blouse. Do you know where I put it? Phil says hi. Mom. Also for context, she put like this... Ep this... Ugh, she, she just... The mom and dad are the same characters. Everything they say is the same. I'm disappointed. And she tries to explain it away. Uh, have fun. Like, not reading that. Don't read that part. Here we go. I sighed and went to the next... It was since six hours after the first. Bo, why haven't you emailed me yet? What are you waiting for? Mom. The last was from this morning. Buford Swan, if I haven't heard from you by 5.30 p.m. today, I'm calling Charlie. Charlie's a cop, so she's meaning business. That's his dad. I checked the clock. I still had an hour, but Mom was known for jumping the gun. Mom, calm down. I'm writing right now. Don't do anything crazy. Bo. I sent that, and then started the next, beginning with a lie. Everything is great. Of course, it's raining. I was waiting for something to write about. School isn't bad, just a little repetitive. I met some okay kids who sit with me by lunch. Your shirt is at the dry cleaners? You were supposed to pick it up Friday. Charlie bought me a truck. Can you believe it? It's awesome. It's old, but really sturdy, which is good. You know, for me. I miss you, too. I'll write again soon, but I'm not going to check my email every five minutes. Relax. Breathe. I love you, Bo. He ended the email with another bunch of lies. I heard the front door bang open, and I hurried downstairs to take a, the potatoes out and put the steak in to broil. Bo, my father called out when he heard me on the stairs. Who else, I thought to myself. Hey, Dad, welcome home. Thanks. He hung up his gun belt and stepped out of his boots as I moved around the kitchen. As far as I was aware, he never shot the gun on the job, but he kept it ready. When I'd come home as a child, come here as a child, he would always remove the bullets as soon as he walked in the door. I can't believe she went to school to write. I guess he considered me old enough now not to shoot myself by accident, and not depressed enough to shoot myself on purpose. Womp womp. What's for dinner, he asked wearily. Mom was an imaginative cook, and she bothered, and her experiments weren't always edible. I was so surprised and sad that he seemed to remember her that far back. Steak and potatoes, I answered. Charlie looked relieved. He obviously felt awkward standing in the kitchen doing nothing. He lumbered into the living room to watch TV while I worked. I think we were both more comfortable that way. I made a salad with, while the steak cooked and set the table. That's enough for now, children. 
uh, tune in next time when I try to keep reading this. Yeah.